Well, hello and welcome. Welcome to FC Cymru. Well, it's kind of a, think of it like an FC Cymru light. So, you know, we're still talking to people all over Welsh football and we still want to celebrate all the brilliant people that are involved in the game and everything, but it's all being sort of condensed down into a slightly more digestible lockdown-sized package. Think of it like that. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, we wanted to pay tribute to you guys and everything you've been doing because we've been seeing charity work, we've been seeing uh, staying connected with your communities, the way you've been connecting with your youth teams and keeping everybody involved despite these crazy times. So we wanted to pay tribute to you and that's going to come up delivered by that man over there. Yes, indeed. Yeah, so I've been talking to uh, Rimbo Lodge, I've been talking to Carnarvon Town, I've been talking to Cardiff City Ladies. So really just focusing on uh, what it means and how important it is to stay connected, stay connected with each other, with your community, with your club as well, to really try and get this. So that's coming up a bit later on in this uh, shortened programme. But first, Mr. Lawrence Moore, my esteemed colleague, he has been meeting the good people from Gore Company. Now, we know that they are fabulous people and they raise money and they normally raise money to help charities abroad but of course we're not going abroad because the euros were cancelled so they've decided to spend the money here in wales and we want to find out more well listen guys thank you so much for joining us uh gonna be chatting all about gold cymru tim let's start with you uh, for those that don't know give us a little overview about gold cymru how long you've been going uh, and what is it you usually do? Well, when you all started back in 2002 in Azerbaijan, uh, football supporters had a pretty ropey, you know, sort of, uh, there was opinion of them because of some bad behaviour at tournaments. And we just thought, well, look, we go to these countries, crowds of us from Wales, having a good time. Everyone's so friendly. Let's give a little something back. So it was just a sort of ad hoc thing. We raised money in a pub in Baku in 2002, and we went to some children's homes. The thing kind of snowballed from then. So every time Wales play, home or away, Gore raises money from various activities and we give to a children's charity or we visit a children's home. And that kind of brings us round to this summer and obviously going back to Azerbaijan, being back in Baku again. And Tom, it was all kind of set up for, for what we were going to do and, and the Euros. And, and I guess you guys had plenty of plans for that as well, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we, uh, we also had a, a pre-Euro 2020 planning meeting. Um, we had lots of things planned. Um, we're all set tasks to go and you know look back at some of the places we visited previously, um, new places within Rome, for example, as well. We, we met up uh, a few weeks back um, and we assessed the situation and decided to allocate the funds towards local charities that are doing a lot of good work in this, uh, in this uh, pandemic. They're all charities that have been giving very good work locally for children affected by the COVID-19 crisis. Chester, was this a, a, an easy decision for you guys to make? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, as soon as we, we realised that we weren't going to be able to um, to visit you know, the countries that we planned for during the Euros, um, we obviously don't know what the situation is going to be like towards the end of the year, but it doesn't look like international football is going to be returning um, anytime soon. And thanks to the great work that obviously the Wales fans have done over the years, it's enabled us to have a pretty healthy bank balance going into, um, going into the Euros. So the money that we were going to spend uh, this summer has been easily you know, transferred and it gives us then the time to raise the funds again for when we do want to return to Azerbaijan, go on to Rome, maybe then Finland, Ireland, obviously, uh, if those games ever do get round to being played. Um, but yeah, you know, we saw that there was a, obviously a massive need um, back at home, you know, in, in, in Wales during this crisis. Um, and we thought if there's any way that we can help, uh, why not? And um, yeah, because of the generosity of Wales fans, people like um, Lee James, who did that seven marathons in seven days for us. Um, Steph Thomas, who died uh, a few years ago, he, um, his family uh, very kindly donated um, a lot of money to the charity as well. And that's put us in a really, really helpful position. Not, of course, to forget all the parties that, that are organised before the matches and everyone's individual donations too. Um, and that's enabled us to, yeah, uh, be in a healthy position where we can help, um, help charities back home in Wales. Um, as well as hopefully moving forward uh, in all the games that we've got, we've got coming up. And what's been the response, Tim, so far from the uh, organisations that you've sort of spoken to across Wales and that you've contacted and, and started this dialogue with? It's absolutely brilliant. And we found this abroad as well. 
it, it's, it's not just the money, it's people like us saying, we appreciate what you do, and we're going to do our little bit to try to help you. Uh, I mean, a lot of these charities, they're still working during lockdown, you know. There are still children dying there and families who need help, and there are children who may not be getting, uh, you know, school meals every day. So these people do need help. And I think it's important that we as Welsh football fans say, well, it's not just about the football, it's, it is about having a good time when Wales is away and Wales are playing at home, and it is about the Euros, but Euros are cancelled, no football. We're still able to help, and they're, they're so grateful. As I say, it's not just the money, it's just that we're actually recognising and thanking them for the work that they're doing. And you've had some adventures, Chester, haven't you? I mean, this is uh, one of the things I love is following your social media and what you guys get up to, and, and not just the, the the places that you go and visit and, uh, and the way that you sort of take Wales to them and show them what kind of people we are, but also the way that you kind of get there. I think there was uh, uh, driving across Europe to Georgia, amongst other things. Yeah, so um, a group of us, um, some of us maybe a bit more mad than others who want to do it time and time again, um, but we will drive to whatever the furthest uh, away away game is. Um, thankfully, we've got uh, uh, Gareth Bainton on board, who um, is uh, he runs a garage, and you can get us some cheap cars um, that we can basically then donate to um, to good causes on the way. You mentioned the Georgia trip. Trip. Unfortunately, we were stuck on the Black Sea for five days instead of 32 hours, and I'm still bitter about it. Yes, um, and we missed out on a few days' activities in Georgia. Um, but yeah, we, we managed to revisit some uh, homes that we've been to before in Ukraine. Um, likewise, we've got uh, a few when we when we played in Macedonia and in Bosnia. Um, we ended up donating the cars to to organisation um, working with disadvantaged families uh, in northern Kosovo. Um, there, who we've revisited, and it allows us then to actually keep in touch with. Um, with some of the um, some of the organisations that we've been through over the years, without the generosity of the Wales fans, it really wouldn't be possible. Just to finish off, then Tom, so for uh, for one hope for uh, 2021 and, and for goal, what would it be? I think just yeah, we just got to keep doing what we're doing, and um, like the other guys have said, um, we wouldn't be able to do it without the fantastic uh, donations and support that we get from Wales fans, both home and away. Um, so let's hope the Euro 2020. Uh, 2021 now, is that <laughs> happens. Um, we win more than one game, obviously, and we can go back to Azerbaijan, go to Rome, and do all the continue to do the fantastic work that we had planned there. Well, listen, guys, thank you so much for coming on and telling us all about uh, Gaul. Thank you for the work you're doing in and around Wales, and I'm sure over the next few months we will be hearing more from you as we build up to Euro 2020 slash Euro 2021, as it will always be known. But listen, stay safe and thanks very much. While I've been sitting here sipping tea, you good people have been way more active and inspirational, doing loads of amazing things, and it's just been fantastic to watch. But something else happened. Did you notice? Well, the Welsh football season just kind of ended. It's really weird. I mean, you know, there was no final day drama, no great escapes, no corks popping, no fizz everywhere, no semi-drunken players all screaming, Champione, Champione, Ole, Ole, Ole. No TNS at the top of the Cumbria Premier. It's just weird, but I mean, we have champions and those champions must be celebrated. So, with a quick league roundup, let's start with Tom. You're a golden lips like cherries, it's good to get a trophy back in the green, green grass of home. dulcet tones of Clonerskey Nomads manager Andy Morrison there and quite rightly so as Nomads are the JD Cymru Premier Champions at last and indeed the first ever JD Cymru Premier Champions no less under its new moniker. Multiple bridesmaids in previous seasons they have finally broken the stranglehold of TNS who'd won the last eight and their reward is a fine trophy, bragging rights, that stunning singing performance and of course a UEFA Champions League spot for next season. TNS and Bala get the Europa League slots, so well done to them too. 
Just along the North Wales coast, Prestatyn Town are the first ever Cymru North champions. After dominating the division, they were 16 points clear when time was called, so huge congratulations to Neil Gibson and his team. In Cymru South, Swansea University were in a close-fought battle with Haverford West for most of the season and, in the end, take the title by the slimmest of margins. Fantastic effort by them and congratulations. And not too far away, in the Orchard Welsh Premier Women's League, Swansea City Ladies have prized the title away from Cardiff Met after a run of 11 games with 10 wins, 1 draw and no defeats. One of the biggest things is that we've known most of the players for uh, well, since they were kids. Um, so they've come right through our system uh, from, you know, some of them eight, nine years of age and now they're, you know, mid to late thirties. Uh, and we've been together all that time, highs and lows. So seeing the smiles on their faces and how they've developed and grown up and become the great mature players that they are now, that, that's a, you know, that's a real reward for me. We don't want things to be a one-off. We'd like to give it a bash again and do our best and keep going and keep raising the bar. It's a second title in four years for Swansea and their fourth in total, and it means they're into the Women's Champions League for next season. You know, we've got an academy full of young players. You know, something like this is a fantastic inspiration for them. Getting past that first hurdle would make a world of difference to football in Wales. Congratulations to those teams then, and indeed to everyone who topped their table this season. And you know, strange times, of course, but that shouldn't detract from the sacrifice and the effort that everyone puts into their campaign. The champions are champions after all. The campaign, of course, now is just to keep going, to stay connected, to keep supporting each other as best we can. I mean, keeping in touch with each other and supporting each other is the best way that we're going to make it through all this. So here's just a couple of examples of how some teams are trying their best to keep those connections while the pitches are empty and while the changing rooms are free from the odour of mud and deep heat. It is a massive void. I mean, it's it's quite sad when you go on walks and you do pass the subway banks. And there's no activity whatsoever. Um, it's very quiet on there, and we're just trying our best to engage using football, but obviously now using social media like we are ourselves to try and keep people engaged and involved, and just you know they are more than anybody else. <laughs> We've got a fantastic fan base, um, definitely the biggest fan base in the Welsh Prem. Um, one of the first things we did um, a couple of weeks into lockdown, we got all the players involved in, in sending out some personal messages, you know, and I think that went down well, but it shows as well um, the closeness between the players and the, you know, our supporters, um, and the players were more than ready to do it. So, we, yeah, we had a good laugh doing that, yeah. Hi everybody, Turds here, just checking in. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, everyone is okay uh, during the current uh, current pandemic. Uh, it can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. Uh, you know, as you can see, the, the dogs are falling asleep because uh, my band has, well, basically just got boring with them, uh, to be honest. But um, no, just, uh, just making sure we're checking in uh, with everyone, especially the Covey Army. Make sure you look after yourselves, make sure you look after your loved ones. Uh, my phone's on, if anyone wants to, if anyone wants to chat during this time, uh, you probably not like to be fair, I'll probably get pied, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll wait and see. Take care of yourselves and hopefully see you soon. We've got supporters who live on their own, um, supporters who, who, you know, might only go out on Saturdays to watch us play. So it's important that we keep in touch with them. There's quizzes going on through Zoom or, or FaceTime. And, that, and that's again, that's getting parents involved, the kids involved, brothers and sisters. It's it's all good fun, and uh, it just it's just keeping everyone on their toes, and just telling them that as coaches and as a football club, we're thinking about them as players, as parents, and as family members. Because at the end of the day, football is a big family, and that's what we are as a football club. 
And of course, so many of you have been doing so much to raise money for charities and supporting our key workers. There have been run challenges, bike challenges, even a tea bag challenge, although that was really just to show off. Connor City Ladies are just one of many teams at all levels and in all parts of this wonderful country doing their bit. Hiya, it's Corrie here from Cardiff City Ladies. Uh, I just want to tell you a little bit about the challenge that myself and some of my teammates have been doing since lockdown has started. So we thought about raising some money for the NHS. So we thought about doing a challenge which for us was we were going to complete five kilometres every single day until lockdown ended. As long as we complete it through running, biking or walking then you know we'd be happy. We want to raise money for the NHS, in particular uh, St. Craddock's Hospital in Newport where one of the players, Shannon, currently is working and we thought that what better way to you know give our money than to give it to somewhere that's close to our hearts and Shannon's. So we are going to give all the money to them so they can buy some outdoor sports equipment. So thank you very much for listening and I really appreciate all the support we've already had. And if you do want to, you know, give some money or even if it's just a like or a share on Twitter or Facebook, we really, really appreciate your support. Positively heartwarming. Bite the back of your hand, beautiful. And there is only one way we could possibly finish a sequence like that. With poise, panache and the voice of an angel. Take it away, Andy. Ah, big feels, guys. Big feels. Well done to all of you. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty out there that we haven't managed to cover. Um, and that's why we've got loads of mini FC coverage coming up over the following weeks because we'll be uh, tracking back some of our old stories and finding out how some of the people we've been to visit to, uh, are getting on now. So uh, look across for those. But Alex, as ever, our social media details, they can stay connected with us as well, can't they? Yes, that's exactly what they're there for. They're around here somewhere, they're, they're around there, or maybe they're over there. Or they're over there. I, I don't know, it depends on how the uh, the show is edited, I suppose that's, that's up to somebody else. But the point is, we need to keep this going. We need to keep these connections going because that's what's gonna get us through and we need to keep reminding ourselves, remembering that Welsh, Welsh football is fabulous and that there are loads of fabulous people in it and that we will be back and there are still great stories to tell. So. Let's carry on and tell them. See you soon. All right.